Lord. Yes, God. God is good. God is good. Thank you, Lord. A wonderful God. Praise the Lord, church. This is a good op another opportunity for us to give God the glory today. I want you to turn your Bible stuff. Um, Luke, chapter 8. Luke, chapter 8. We're going to be looking at verses 43 through 47. And we're familiar with this passage of Scripture. Uh, we heard it several times, but God is want us to look at it in a different light today. Amen. Amen. For our encouragement. Because if this individual could go through what she went through, there's no excuse for us. Amen. And today's title is Never Give Up. Never Give Up. Praise God. Here in verse 43 was a woman. Start your reading. And a woman having an issue of blood. Twelve years. Twelve years. She had a problem. Amen. Amen. Which had spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could be healed any. So she spent all this time going to these doctors. And nobody could heal her. Just imagine that. Imagine your situation, the things that you're experiencing, that you're going through. She went to everybody and they couldn't heal her. So she didn't give up. She was persistent. Because here in verse 44, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, or the hem of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stents or stopped. In verse, uh, I mean, it actually in, it's recorded in Matthew 9, 21, it says, She said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of her garment. And we know right there, that's where everything starts at. You know, people may give up on you, but she said here that in that Matthew 9, 21, she said, it says, she said within herself. See, and that's where it starts at. Like I said, everybody can, can, can give up on you. But you can't give up on yourself. Jesus. You can never give up. If God has called you, and he's called you, Amen. and he's brought you out of this world, amen, and you're on your way to glory, we can never give up because we have, a, we have something that's going on, taking place on the inside of us. Amen. amen. And that's hope that's beyond any hope of this world. Amen. We have a hope that surpasses anything imaginable because we have the very essence of God on the inside of us. So back to this verse here when it says, she came behind him, and she touched the border of his garment on him, and immediately the issue of blood stopped. Twelve years. Could you imagine how she must have felt? Oh, praise God, yeah. All these doctors and all this money she spent, and all of a sudden it stopped, and we and ourselves will be going through our situations where we see sometimes we feel like giving up. Sometimes it's like, you know, man, when is it going to stop? Yes, sir. You know, David said in Psalms 37, he says he... he he uh, 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 regretted to see the, the, the righteous, for, uh, I mean, uh, the unbelievers prospering. Psalm 73, I believe, uh, uh, 3 talks about the, the prosperity of the righteous. And it was like, he was kind of upset with that. And sometimes we in ourselves and our own, as being believers, we're seeing the world seems like it's moving right ahead. Everybody seems, people seem to be prospering and there seems to be no problems. But let me tell you something, that's just for a lifetime. This lifetime, why are you in this flesh? The Bible says it's a point of the man wants to die in the judgment. And see, as believers, we have treasures up in heaven, man. We're Amen. storing treasures Amen. in heaven that's going to be forever. Amen. Regardless of what's going on here. Yes. We can't afford to give up. We don't have a give up spirit. No. <laughs> it's not in us as believers to throw in the towel. We can't give up if we wanted to. If God abides in each and every one of us, you can't give up. Regardless of what comes down the pike. Now, let's get, finish reading here. It says, and Jesus said, listen in verse 45, who touched me? See, who touched me? That's one thing about the Lord. And, and I love this. He says here, when all deny, uh, deny Peter, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, come on, man. Yeah, right. The multitude was all around you, in other words, pressing thee and saying thou, you, who touched you? 
So in other words, he was, he was surrounded by people and they was bumping into him and he said, wait a minute, who touched you? Peter couldn't understand. But see, everybody who calls on the name of the Lord is not heard. Amen. Only those who believe him. That's why I said, who touched me? See, the Lord knows who touched him. Watch this. In 46, and Jesus said, somebody had touched me. For I perceive that virtue is going out of me. In other words, virtue is another term for spiritual energy, power, grace. Amen. So he knew he was God. Amen. Amen. So he knew when somebody touched him, somebody said, the pure heart shall see God. So he knew when this woman touched him, she was serious. Wow. She wasn't going to give up. She should have gave up a long time ago. She could have gave up a long time ago going to this doctor and that doctor, but she said no. Well, when she heard about this Jesus coming, someone who could heal and raise the dead, she said, hey, if I, I don't have to, you know, you imagine how she must have felt physically. Yeah. Well, she says, I can just touch the hem of his garment, meaning she was probably crawling. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't have no too much strength in her. Amen. So she's like, just because people around her said, if I can just go in and just get close to him. And so God saw that desire and that, and that eagerness for her to, to get close. Let's we'll finish reading here. And when the woman saw that she was uh, not hit, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. You see that? So what was going on with her? When, you, when God touches you and you're seeking out to him, you honor, you give him honor, amen. You give him, uh, uh, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, amen. Yes. amen. amen. You, amen. you have a reverence now because you've been going through this thing for so long, but you never gave up, uh, reached out to God, and he touched you. He delivered you, amen. Well, everybody else turned it back on you and didn't have nothing for you. But God delivered and he, he made sure that you was going to be heard, amen. That's the kind of God we serve. We serve a kind of God that we don't have to give up on. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna tell you why. Because some people, I can tell you, I'm gonna show you where a lot of people have went wrong, and they they call themselves believers, but a true believer has a, a, a it's a different type of attitude that we have. No matter how hard how hard or how hot it gets in the kitchen, we can persevere. We can overcome. Amen. And that's why it says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, I believe, verse 1 and 2, it says he led them in the wilderness to see what was in them. Amen. There it is. Amen. To humble them and to see what they was in them and they were going to believe and follow him or not. That's why we have these trials and tribulations in our life. Because God wants to know who's the true worshiper, who really loves me, who's really seeking after me. This woman was seeking after him, man. She wasn't giving up. And we can't worry about the little things that's going to come our way in our life that throws us off track. But God delivered us. Nobody can pluck us out of his hand. Once he is, we are sealed with the spirit of redemption, we have his spirit in us. Once we receive Christ as our Lord and our Savior, I don't care what happens, we are on our way to glory. Yes, Satan might make the world look all messed up sometimes, but it don't matter. His weapons ain't going to prosper. They're not going to get through. Amen. We're on our way to glory. And that's the thing that we got to hold on to because sometimes we feel like giving up. Sometimes we just feel like saying, you know what, I can't take this no more. When's the blessing coming? And sometimes it seems like God don't hear you. But see, there's something in us. There's something in us, man, that we cannot give up. We got enough believers around us. We got enough folk who love God and love us. They ain't going to let that happen. Amen. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to let somebody say, well, you know, I'm just trying to make it in. Now we're in. You know, we're not going to be uh, uh, falling back on, you know, uh, well, I give up. You can't give up. You can't give up. This woman was, had an issue. She had a problem with her blood for 12 years. Jesus. Oh, my goodness. That's a long time. I mean, it, I mean, she was constantly probably just weak all the time. Mm -hmm. But she didn't give up. She did not give up. Amen. This is where a lot of us go wrong in. Amen. Uh, I, I wanted to look at Mark, since we're in this facility, look at Mark 4. Mark 4, the parable of the sower. And there was something here. You have the three soils. It says in uh, verse that verse uh, 13 or 14 of Mark 4, it says, The sower sows the word. That's the Lord or uh, whoever else of us as believers. 
you know, spread the gospel. The sower sows the word. And these are they that were the wayside when the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was in their hearts. All these particular soils here, these soils represent hearts. Okay, they represent a heart of a person. Amen. The first three hearts didn't know God. A lot of, most of them had a form of godliness, but they didn't have the power of God. They denied the power of God. See here, the first ground was the, was the wayside. All right? And he says, 16, And these are they likewise, when they are sown on stony ground, this is the second one, who when they heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. And they had no root in themselves. They had no root in themselves. Amen? No root in themselves. Talks about... They had a hard heart. Amen. We've seen those kind of people. I mean, churches are packed with people like that. You know? Soon it gets rough, man, they out of here. They can't take it. Amen? Listen, the gospel never really takes root in, the, in, the, in their souls. It never takes root. Because the Bible called us to deny ourselves. See? Pick up your cross and follow me. Christ walked the walk and he follow after his father a walk of suffering and dying to self. That's the same thing we have to do to ourselves. If we're going to be true believers, we got to die to self. That ain't easy, y'all. Y'all know that ain't easy? Amen. You know, people want to, they want the glitz and the glamour and it, it, that's not what the Bible's calling for. He said, deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. And watch this. He says here, they had no root in themselves, verse 17, and so endure before time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. You see that? Look at verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as heard the word, and the cares of this world, and the secrets of riches, and the lust of other things, enter in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. I've seen a lot of people be drawn away by the cares of this world. They're not really receiving, you know, they're looking at the world and they're envying it, and, they, and, they, and, and they're actually envying the people of the world because they have material things. But see, God didn't call us to a world like that. He said, the love of money is the root of all evil. And people might have some temporary things right now, but you're not taking that stuff with you when you leave here. You're not taking it with you when you leave here. The Bible says here, it says, mm, God is good. And the cares of this world, talking about uh, 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 the persecution and the temporary issues that people are going to face in this world. Amen. The sinfulness of riches. Not only money that pulls people away, but people are pulling, they're being pulled away because they're not really understanding God's eternal, eternal security, amen, that he has for us. Because they're just looking for the now. So these things are temporal. But we've got to look at things that are eternal, praise God. That's what our focus is going to be on, things that are eternal. Not this going on right now. Because this is going to pass away, y'all. <laughs> this ain't going to last long. Amen. It's not Amen. going to last long at all. Praise Amen. God. God is good. The Bible tells us one of the things that what people go wrong at is that people have fellowship with the works of darkness. Amen. We as believers ain't got no business, you know, having fellowship with darkness. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, I believe, verse 11, it says, have no fellowship with the works of darkness, listen, but rather reprove them. In other words, you've got to expose them. Amen. If you feel something, the Spirit is letting you know, something's got to go. I don't care if it's people, place, or things. They got to go. You can't go forward and live for God and have these things hanging around in your life. It's not going to work. If we're living in some kind of sin that God doesn't like, you better deal with it because God's going to deal with you. And He might allow you to stay in that, that time and that storm for a long time. See? We've been man doing it for a night. See, that night might be a long time. Amen. Usually our nights are nine or ten hours long. Amen. But it might be one of them kind of nights they have in Canada Amen. where it's six Amen. months long. Yeah. I don't Amen. need no night like that. I don't need no time of, you know, of darkness and despair in my life. You know, going through a thing in my life where, I, you know, God is trying to tell me, repent. Turn away from those things. Amen. Can't happen. Can't happen, church. Cannot happen. We talked about last week about taking, taking, listen, taking our victory by force. Satan, we know that dealing with spiritual warfare, we know that he's always throwing darts of, uh, at us. Darts of doubt, darts of despair, uh, darts, darts of un, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 discouragement, amen. 
thoughts of uh, discouragement, thoughts of depression. Amen. And his greatest weapon is fear. But the Bible says he didn't give us that spirit. But the love and power and the sound mind. And this is why we got to understand some things. See, when you're going through, this is when these things darts start to try to penetrate. Try to wear you down. You know, amen? They try to just wear you out when you're going through because you want to give up. The flesh is weak. But we are strong spiritually. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. Amen. It's our responsibility to allow his spirit to strengthen us. Here's some of the reasons why we ought to never give up. Amen. The Romans 8, 8, 8, 28 tells us all the time. We heard it before. It says, praise God. Let's look at it. We, we read it before and we heard it, but I want you to see it for yourself. Amen. Romans 8, 28. Very familiar verse. Amen. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. See, he says, and we know. See, we got to know this for ourselves. And we know that all things work together for good. Good and the bad. That storm you win, that hard time you win. See, that woman at the time of the issue of blood didn't know this. But she knew within herself, if I can just touch her. So we got to reach out and touch the Lord, man. Amen. God is touching us each and every day. You know, me and my brother was talking the other day. Uh, 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 Brother Joe, we were talking about the heart and how the heart just can beat consistently for 80 or 90 years. Right. No break. No break. <laughs> No maintenance. Just keeps on beating, man. Boom. 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 That's a God who is faithful. Amen. Who cares about me and you. Amen. And we look at life like that and realize what kind of God we serve. Amen. You know, what kind of God? I mean, it's been times you just want to give up, man. This is what you, we can't never give up. Watch this. He says, and we know that all things work together for good. For them that love God. There it is. We got to love God. Amen. See, that's when things are going to work together for good when we love Him. We got to love God. We got to show God that we love Him. Amen. Amen. Even though I want to give up sometimes, I can't give up. No. Like, we can't give up. Amen. Because what God has done for me, we all have that track record. We all have our own personal Bible with God. Amen. 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 Those, those times that He brought us through and the things that He delivered us from. And you look back over your life and you realize God has really been good to me. Amen. God's Amen. been good Thank to us. Lord. And how can I give up now? Amen. But regardless what you bring down the pike, and, and God, listen, God allows these things to happen, remember? Because He wants to see what's in us. Wow. He wants to see what we made of. Amen. He wants to see if we are made of ourselves or we are made of Him. Amen. There's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. We've been crucified with Jesus. Watch this. He says, well, I, well, we all know that all things work together for good for them that love him, for them who are called according to his purpose. I'm called according to his purpose. You are called according to his purpose, whatever situation you're in that's trying to get you to give up. You're called for that exact purpose. Amen? Because we're going to look to God. <laughs> we're going to depend on God regardless what happens. Amen? He said, I'll never leave you. I'll forsake you. Peter began to walk on the water. And Jesus said, come. He looked to the left, he looked to the right, he saw the waves, he began to sink. But see, when the Lord, he started focus on the Lord, he says, oh, you a little faith. And he told us all the time, your faith has made you, make you whole. And it's our faith, it's our individual faith. See, what you do, how you believe, I can't get through with the Lord for my situation. I got to believe myself, amen. I got to trust God myself. So I can't depend on nobody else but the Lord, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise we have a verse we see in Ephesians Ephesians chapter 3. Amen. Let's go forward. Ephesians 3. We heard this. Hallelujah. Mm. God is good. 3.16. We heard this. Let's look at it again. He said that he would grant you, uh, Paul talking to those believers and the churches of Ephesus, he says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, listen, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. This is why we can't give up. You see, if I can do all things and you can do all things, Christ who strengthen me, we got to put ourselves in a position so he can strengthen us. So when he strengthens us, amen, that's going to, what's going to happen? We're going to be strengthened in the man so we can't give up. Because the greater one lives in us, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We can't never give up. It ain't in us. God is in us, man. We're greater than the enemy out there in the world. We got the very essence of God on the inside of us. We got to realize and understand that. Praise God. I want you to look at uh, uh, praise God. Um, 
Mark 4. Hallelujah. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. I got a responsibility. You have a responsibility to allow God's Spirit to strengthen you. That's on a daily basis. When we read there, we didn't read it, but it's actually in that Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 through 3 or 4. It talks about, and it talks about in uh, Mark, uh, uh, I mean Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Man don't live by bread alone. Amen. But by every word. Our spiritual man has to be enlightened. He has to be strengthened. Because when it's all said and done, when we've gone through all these hard times in our life, this is where our strength is going to come from. It's going to come from the inside out. And it comes from the spirit of man. Amen? And it's strengthened by his word, by his spirit. In this Mark 4, look at verse 26 uh, uh, and 27. We read this a couple of uh, weeks ago. And Jesus says, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep. And rise night, night and day, and the seed shall spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. I love this one. It says 27. And should sleep and rise up day and night. That means that you got a peaceful sleep. That means you ain't worrying. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That means you ain't. The Bible says, the Bible tells us, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Don't let your mind be focused on your circumstances and looking at the problems that you're going through. That thing is trying to get you to give up. We got to focus on what God has done for us on the inside of us. Amen. When he says here, praise the Lord, he says, listen, when he says 27, it should sleep, rise uh, night and day. In other words, that's the person who ain't worrying. That's the person, when you rise night and day, you, you, you're not getting up with that situation on your mind. You let, it's, it's out of your hands. You must cast all your cares upon him. You ain't thinking about worrying about that thing. You gave it to God. So now his peace gonna come in and it's gonna pass all understanding of what's going on. Cause sometimes, see, we got to we got to lay that thing down at the altar and at the altar and leave it there. Don't go back and pick it up. Don't go back and pick it up. Leave it there. Let it go. Sometimes you gotta let stuff go. It's out of our hands. We can't, we the battle don't belong to me and you. It belongs to him. We gotta let that Lord, you take care of this thing, amen. You take care of this. Hallelujah. Mm. Listen. Another reason why we can't give up, John chapter 6. John chapter 6, amen. Here in verse 64, uh, Jesus had uh, told his, those that were following him, he said to them, he says, I want you to follow me and uh, eat of my body and, and, and drink of my blood. And they said, well, he sounded like he's accountable to me. <laughs> and he went on to say in verse uh, uh, 64, I believe, he, listen, 64 says, But there are some of you that believe not. Jesus speaking. See, God knows who believes him or not. He knows who believes. He says, listen. For Jesus knew from the beginning who, were, who they were that believed not, and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me. No man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. I love that. See, that's one of the things that helps me understand that if God chose us, and he, and he did, amen. amen, he chose us for a purpose. Not to succumb or not to be drawn away forever and deceived by the enemy. Amen. <laughs> he called us out of the world. He saved us. We have his seal of approval. His spirit, man. And regardless what, we can't give up. Watch this. Look at verse 66. And from that time, many of his disciples went. They went, watch. Went back and walked with him no more. And Jesus said here, Then Jesus said unto the twelve, 67, Will you also go away? Here's one of the biggest reasons why we can't give up. Watch this. Simon Peter answered the Lord, To whom shall we go? We can't give up. Where are you going to go? He says, But thou hast the words of eternal life. Do you know that for yourself? See, when you want to give up, and Satan's bringing those, throwing those arrows of despair and dis discouragement, you can't give up. Because, listen, he has the words of eternal life. There's nowhere else to go. Amen? If we go to him and we trust him, praise God, we're going to be all right. God is so good. Hallelujah. Watch this. Mm. God's good. 
John 14, 21, I just read it to you. It says, He that have my commandments and keeps or obeys them, he is that loves me. Amen. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. You see that there? Love. You say you love him? Well, keep his commandments. Obey his commandments. And when you really obey his commandments and you and showing that you love him, guess what? He gonna, he gonna show up in your life. Amen. He's gonna give you the ability to overcome. He's gonna give you discernment. No matter what kind of thing that you're going through, he's gonna have the answer there for you, man. He's gonna God knows what he's doing, y'all. Watch this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look at Luke 23. Luke 23. Now here's a man who should have gave up. He should have gave up because he knew God had mercy on him. Luke 23, look at 39. Amen. Luke 23, 39 says, And one of the malefactors are the thieves, which were hung, nailed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. In other words, he was close to death. Here's a person who didn't give up, man. He was close to death. He said, if you be the Christ, save thyself and us. See? But the others answered and rebuked him, saying, Do not thou fear God, see if that thou art in, in the same condemnation. In other words, he's telling them, Hey, man, don't be sarcastic. You pull the be the Christ, save us in yourself. You hanging right next to me. But the one said, hey man, don't do that. Don't play that game. Watch this. He says here, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man have done nothing amiss. In other words, he was testifying that he was guilty of his crime. I know this man do anything, but we got to talk about being sarcastic. All right, you Jesus, save us. Save yourself and save us. But watch this. Verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou come unto thy kingdom. And Jesus said in 43, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, today, thou, the, today shall thou be with me in paradise. That man didn't give up. He knew when he was on a cross, he was about to die in a couple of hours. But he did not give up. You're talking about somebody near death. I mean, there's hope. For us. There's hope for the soul that reaches out to the Lord. There's hope for us. There's hope for us. I don't care what happens, man. I mean, we got to stop comparing ourselves with the, how the world's prospering. This ain't going to last long, man. I mean, we should be praying for the world. You know, because a person, you know, we too many folks classify themselves as being successful by the things that they have. Amen. Amen. Our life does not consist of the material things that we have. It doesn't. That don't make me nobody. It don't make you nobody. If we caught up on that, we better repent right now. Because that's not going to get you nowhere. Nowhere with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. I want us to look at John chapter 3. John, 1 John chapter 3, sorry. 1 John chapter 3. And this is where we got to look at very carefully why we can't give up. Amen? John 3, 1 John 3. Look at verse 20. When you're there, say amen. amen. He says here, Hallelujah. Mm. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart. Amen. 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 And know of all things. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He has given gave us commandment. And He that 24... And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us 
by the Spirit which He hath given us. Now let's look at this real careful now. God knows who's His. When He says here, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. In other words, when our conscience is not clear. Amen. He says here, for if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. If we know we walk walking right with God, we believe in the Lord, and we trust in Him, we're not going to have no condemnation about things in our life. Because what the Spirit does, the Spirit will bring those things that's, that's uh, 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 afflicting us out to the surface. I understand all those things. Look at, uh, keep your hand there, look at Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, verse 1. Amen? He says here, There is therefore no, now no condemnation, watch this, to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, if you walk after the Spirit, there's no condemnation. So your heart can't condemn you. You see? But if it does condemn you, God is greater than your hearts because you had that, that word rooted in your heart. It's in you. See? This is why we can't, the reason, one of the reasons we can't give up because God is greater than our hearts, man. If we are walking in the spirit and not the flesh, there's no condemnation. There's nothing that the enemy can pull from us, what I'm trying to say, to, to, to get at us, to, to use and, and uh, you know, against us. Amen. Remember when Jesus said in John 14, 30, 29 and 30 or 31, he says the evil one comes, but he has nothing in me. Amen. amen. But in us, but in us, amen, with a fallen nature, that sin nature, Satan can pull from that if we're walking in the flesh. But if we're walking in the spirit, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, there's no condemnation. We can't give up. Amen. Look at the next verse. He says, God is good. Amen. Amen. And see, this is going to, this is going to prove something here. And when people, Satan trying to get this, get you to doubt your salvation. Because he tries that trick a lot, a lot of times when you're going through and you want to give up. Now you ain't saying, look what you're doing. You done messed up. Uh-huh. Doing the same thing again. And a lot of people doubt their salvation. But this, this is going to prove here today that our salvation Amen. Cannot be doubted. Even though we have some insecurities in our life sometimes. Amen. A lot of we go through some things. We're insecure about some things in our life. Amen. And we have these things because we're human. But one of the things that helps us understand, amen, is that uh, 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 we should never doubt about our salvation because we have God's Spirit on the inside. Amen. We have a spirit on the inside. Now, you should never doubt what God has done for you. Because, see, but only you can say that for yourself, though. Only you can testify that for yourself. Amen. Because if you're walking with the Lord and you're keeping His commandments, He's going to manifest. He's going to show up. He's going to be in your life. Amen. So, these things are given up no, no matter what the, what the situation is. I can't afford to give up. I can't afford to give up. You know, too many, my life and other people's lives depend on me not giving up. You see? And see, when I take myself out of the equation and trust in the Lord, the Bible says in Psalm 37, 4, delight thyself in the Lord, he gives you desires of your heart. Okay, I'm going to delight myself in the Lord. You know, keep focus on it. And he said he's going to bring it to pass. He's going to bring that thing to pass. So it's just my faith in our faith in God and what He can do for us. We should look at the opportunities that God places in this, uh, um, the, the things that we might look at as a, 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 a hard time or something that we might have to face in the future. But we look at it from God's perspective, it gives us an opportunity to really get closer to God, really allow God and see what God can do in the situation. Amen? I mean, let's watch God perform what only He can perform. Don't look at it as, you know, a punishment or, you know, God, why I got to go through this? We just read there all things work together for good. 
If I'm trusting in him and I love him, God is going to work that thing out regardless what the enemy is going to try to throw at me and throw at you. It doesn't matter. And this is when you can really, you know, you're, you're taking the focus off what everybody else is doing and you're focusing on your walk with the Lord and your relationship. You see? Because too far too many people, you know, they compare their relationship with the Lord with somebody else. Get off of that. Don't focus on that. Don't focus on that. What God has called me to do and what he's called you to do, listen, he calls you to do it. He called me to do this. Amen? So he's going to strengthen us to carry out that thing. All I'm talking about is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. God has placed eternity in man's heart and only he can satisfy. We can't even find out for ourselves or any other source, you know, why we were created. God is the one who can tell us why we're here. Amen? So once I'm, you and I are plugged into God, he's going to give us that revelation, man. So I can't give up. You can't give up. Amen? Because... I don't think people really understand how great a salvation we have. You know? To be chosen by Almighty God for eternity to live with Him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my goodness, I can't even fathom that. And we might say to ourselves, why? But I say now, why not? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why not? You know? So all these little things that's coming along that's going to try to get me all thrown off track, it doesn't matter. We may been doing for a night, but joy coming in the morning. I know morning's coming. I'm not gonna let that night be like that Canada night. Amen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be patient, and I'm gonna wait on the Lord. He said, "I'm gonna renew your strength," so I got to keep on waiting on Him. You know, that's why we can't be focusing on what's going on around us. That's why the Bible says that we be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, and not below on the earth. Keep your mindset on Christ. Now, Christ is who is our life. He's gonna appear in our lives, man. And I, you know what? This has been some of the hardest times of my life right now. Jesus. Just want to give up throwing the towel. Amen. I can't do that. I can't do that. I got to hold on. I got to hold on. You ever see the post of a little cat hanging on? Cat just hanging on for dear life on the edge. Amen. We can't Amen. give up, man. Amen. You got to keep on holding on, man. God, God is with you, praise the Lord. He's there. Look at 2 Timothy. We're about to come in here. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Amen. Oh, we still here. Timothy chapter 2. Oh, this is powerful. This is powerful here. Look at this. See, God knows what he's doing. 2 Timothy 2, 19. Watch this. I'm going to look at two particular verses here. We're in a vicinity of them. The first one is going to be 2 Timothy 2, 19. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand up sure. Having this seal, listen, listen. The Lord knows them that are His. The Lord knows who's His, man. I love that. I mean, now I want to compare this verse with, uh, we're in the vicinity, go forward to 1 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 9. Powerful scripture here. Look at this. Hallelujah. Watch. You're going through a hard time. The enemy's on your back. Trying to frustrate you. Trying to get you to give up. Watch this. Verse 9. You there? The Lord knows how to deliver the godly. Listen. From the godly out of temptation. See, the Lord knows how to deliver. You love God. I mean, you really love God. You, you, you just trust in the Lord. No matter what happens, we can't give up. The Lord knows how to deliver us. He knows how to bring us through. Amen? There's no question about it. He knows how to deliver us. Amen? He knows how. I read this to you, uh, you heard this before, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. They have no come temptation taken to you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. So when you believe in the Lord, he's going to have a way of escape. Those times when you get when you want to give up, I mean, I just, I don't see them, but they come. The phone might ring. 
I might turn on the radio or the TV. I might pick up my word. Or I might hear his word just come and comfort me. Amen. And deliver me. See, you know, even want the temptation to say, look, just give it up. Throw it all, throw it all away. Here come God because he knows how to deliver the, the, the godly from temptation. That temptation of, I can't take it no more. I want to give up. If you godly, God knows how to deliver you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God knows how to deliver us. See, go back to that. Let's close with this. Uh, uh, back over to 1 John, um, 1 John 3. 1 John 3. Look at this. Praise God. He says here, 23 and 24. And this is the, com the commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He has given, gave us commandment. And he that keepeth His commandments or obeys them dwells in Him. Amen. And He in Him. Hallelujah. If you abide in me, I'm going to abide in you. And you shall ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. Amen. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He has given us. Let me tell you something. When you believe, believing, loving, and, and obeying are the three major evidence of true salvation. When you believe, and you love, and you obey, that's the sign of a believer. That's a, a, a sign of someone who has been set free. Someone has true salvation. Remember Mark 7, Matthew 7, 21 says, they say, some going to say, Lord, Lord, we've done this. That ain't true salvation. That's not true salvation. He said, I never knew you. So when we, when we know God, that means we're believing in God. That means we are loving God. And that means we're obeying God. So when those three give us, that gives us evidence that we have true salvation. And His Holy Spirit is the, is the power that empowers us, listen, uh, empowers us to have victory. The Bible says, closing, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14 says this, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. You see that? Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. When we in Christ, we are a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, new things come. When we in Christ, trusting in the Lord, believing in the Lord, loving in the Lord, obeying the Lord, that tells me and that tells you, we born again. No matter what comes to try to shake that away, we know that God loves us. We know that God is going to bring us through because He knows how to bring the godly through temptation, man. He knows how to deliver us. So we got to hold on. We can never give up because we got the greater one living on the inside of us. And I thank the Lord for that. I know the storm's going to come. They're going to come at me and they'll come at you. But remember one thing. We can never give up because we got something working on the inside of us. He said, when you receive the Holy Ghost, amen, you're going to receive power. Amen. You're going to receive power, man. God is good, y'all. God is a good God. You can never give up. We can't give up. Because Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Jesus is Lord. God is good. God is good.